Hey yo, here comes Matsuri. Woof 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 woof. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Matsuri, your little hero. Yeah, I, I kind of just made that up. But everybody should already know our girl Matsuri. She was featured in our event that has just passed the Ironclad Nightmare. And I believe she is dropping in about two days. So I wanted to kind of get ahead of the game because like I know that my time is just going to go disappear. And so let's talk about Matsuri. Let's do a quick evaluation and then let's have a look at where exactly she is applicable. Spoiler alert, it's largely going to be Arena, but it's not going to be like Tsumugi levels of like impact, right? When Tsumugi came into the meta, I pretty much wanted to go and jump off a cliff, right? Especially because I did not have Ilya. Generally speaking, Ilya is how you deal with Tsumugi. However, Matsuri, I don't think is going to have that level of impact on the meta. But if I keep going, I'm going to keep spoiling everything and you guys have no context. You guys don't even know like what she does. So like, let's just get on with the video. And so as always, let's start with her skills because that is the most important part. So let's have a look at the UB first. Union Burst, Tiger, Hero, bomber so this really is kind of like her signature move essentially what happens is when matsuri casts this she will jump to the third enemy from the front in the enemy formation yes guys the era of like massive displacement and like utter chaos has already begun we've got binds we've got displacements we've got pulling and pushing we've got like group ups which oh my god it's freaking mess dude why can't we just go back to like beating tamaki stores like seriously oh my god but either way like matsuri kind of makes it all a little bit spicy like that is that's pretty funny to be honest Honest. If you think about it, like take for example a two tank and a three DPS, like three backlines, like three archers or like two archers, one mage, something like that. Take that kind of setup. And so, like, what would happen is that Matsuri on UB cast would jump to the third enemy from the front. And so, tank one, tank two, and then DPS at the back. So, she would jump right into the DPS. So, that's pretty funny, to be honest. Don't worry, I've got you guys. I will show you guys some footage. Like, look at all of this up here. But yeah, that's kind of it. So, essentially, she jumps to the third enemy, deals a large amount of physical damage to all the enemies around the user so it's actually like front and behind and then on top of that after the skill has finished she will remain at the location that she jumped in so yes that means that she will actually jump there and then remain there and the funny thing about this is that this ugh, I think it's just with the battle mechanics it acts like a taunt and what I mean by that is like generally speaking the enemies will attack the nearest enemy right and when I mean their enemy I meant like us so like if your Matsuri jumps into the middle of their team everybody is gonna doggy pile your Matsuri and so that is actually exactly what happens as we will see very very soon however let's move on to skill one so skill one we've got tiger shock inflicts small damage to all enemies surrounding the user so remember it's kind of like a PB AOE it's an area of effect around her and you will see like this recurring theme especially because like she uses her UB to jump in and then does damage around her. So in a nutshell, she's like kind of like a crazy tiger. She jumps right in and then she's just like flailing her arms kind of thing, you know? And so back to the skill one. So she not only does physical damage, but she also stuns everybody around her. Now you can already imagine how annoying this could potentially be, but like uh, this is also like a really, really good asset. It could be used to cancel things, but like stun, hard CC, it's always a good thing. It's a little bit of utility. However, there's not much left to be said about this one. So let's move on to the, UE actually. And I'm just going to talk briefly about this because we won't get this for a while, but essentially she also gets a large physical and magic defense buff to the user. And so just going by the calculations, 2.24 times the skill level. So let's say like level 110, you can already see that when she jumps in and she's able to use the skill one, she is going to gain a massive amount of defense from both physical and magical. And so therefore she goes from like this fighter into something that's a little more tanky, more like a brawler. But trust me guys, like this thing makes her a lot more annoying than she already was. But yeah, we won't be getting this for a while, but just remember for the UE, like it is a pretty decent UE. All right, moving on to the skill two, we've got Tiger Spin. So inflicts medium physical damage to all enemies in a small range surrounding the user. Same thing, jump in, swell, 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 deal damage around herself. All right, moving on, we've got the EX, which is a medium increase and then like a large increase to... Hold up. We've got a medium increase to physical attack and a small increase to physical defense. Okay. I mean, it kind of makes sense when she's like Ramboing like right into the middle of the enemy team. So in my opinion, just because of like her mechanics and the way that she plays, like, you know, jumping in, like, I think this is decent. I think it's okay. I personally don't see Matsuri as like a cold hearted killer, although there are some scenarios where she does jump in and like straight up kill people. So I'm talking like probably Ilya's, but I think having a bit of physical defense is nice. Like it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's just really weird 
worrying, right? When you just see your characters just jump in and tank all the damage. All right, anyway, moving on, we've got the bond level bonus. So we've got the physical attack and a little bit of physical crit, which is nice. And then we've got the Halloween variant, which we will get. I think we get that next year since this year we'll probably be getting Halloween pudding. All right, and so after that, we've got the initial pattern. So like the two into the one, this is like the physical AOE damage into the physical AOE stun. Not bad. However, remember like pre using her UB, she's going to be doing all of this stuff like around her when she is just like in the team, like in your team, right? The real true value in Matsuri and like all of these skill patterns is when she actually jumps in and is able to do this to everybody. However, unfortunately, like this one doesn't show you the ranges. So let me just show you guys this one over here. And so guys, this is the page for Matsuri. And so if I come back down over here, this is the UB skill one, skill one plus, which is with the UE and then skill two EX skills and whatever. And so what I wanted to show you guys is this guy over here actually. So um, distance 300. And so what this means is that it's like attacking the units 300 from Matsuri like forward and 300 from Matsuri backwards as well. And you'll see that this distance thing actually like persists in all of it. So yeah, it's it's really important. It's very, very important that you actually get that UB off to be able to jump in and then do all of this stuff. And trust me guys, like 300 units of distance is a lot of distance. They're gonna hit a lot of people. And so to put that into context, let's come over here. Let's have a look at the Saren or like the away from Saren kind of thing, right? Distance from Saren, that's what it's called. So let's see. Imagine having Kuka and Saren. The distance between Kuka and Saren is 300. Or rather, think of it more like this. So we've got Saren, which is at zero. Imagine that this was instead Matsuri. And so like she would hit everybody in here all the way up to Kuka. And then she would also go backwards over here all the way up to about Suzume, right? However, of course, this completely depends on who she jumps on, like that third unit from the front. And so as you guys can tell, she is going to have so much value if she is able to jump onto a midliner or a backliner. All right, that's a pretty good look at her skills, like especially with the whole distance thing. But yeah, generally speaking, that's kind of like her skill summarized. And so let's get into the Deucey stuff, which is like the arena. Or rather, let me kind of explain first, like she's not really suitable for clan battle. Let's put it that way. If you guys look up like the future sheets and whatever, like uh, I wonder if I have it. Like for example, if you look at any of these, like you are never going to see Matsuri. So like it's it's not really a high priority to juice up your Matsuri, especially because she's a two-star unit. She's going to be like a significant investment in terms of DA for a lot of people. Generally speaking, for CB characters, you want to go up to like four or five stars and you don't really want to do that with a two-star natural, right? So yeah, for CB, if you have a look through all of these, you'll quickly realize Matsuri is not featured in any of them. And it's pretty obvious with her skill set, right? She does a lot of CC. She does a lot of weird things. But again, the most important thing is that she does damage to all enemies around the user. So that is a AoE damage. And we already know that AoE damage is going to have a much lower multiplier than like single target damage. And what do we want in CB? We want single target damage. And so Matsuri doesn't give it to us. And so she is benched for CB. However, Arena is a completely different story. So <laughs> let's get into it. So let me just show you the jump first. The jump is just freaking hilarious. All right, guys, what we have here is a Matsuri, Mitsuki, Misato, Maho, and Yuki comp. And so you can already kind of see where this is playing out, right? The idea behind this comp is like a lot of AoE, but like the sustain to keep that Matsuri going. What you'll notice is that Matsuri is only at three stars and you will see how long she actually lives. So if I scroll back a little bit, I believe she is going to, yeah. All right, that was the image of an Ilya dying. So let me just like go through that really slow. Can I do it at 0.5 speed? All right, just watch that Ilya die. So you see that, see that? There she fades. She is fading away. And that is kind of what I meant, right? Like about the whole jumping into the midline and just really chunking them. I think you might actually be able to see it over here. So guys, the footage I do want to show you guys is in the background. However, there's this text over here. And so if you guys can make out that Ilya over here, and then you can see that this Matsuri down here is about to Yubi. And so let's have a look. Matsuri is literally about to Yubi, and then she's going to jump in and chunk them. Here we go. Matsuri, jump right in. Bam, and there she goes. And then she does a giant damage. And that Ilya is pretty close. Nope, she's dead. She's actually just straight up dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, incredible. Notice, however, that there is the Mitsuki field on the field. And so really, that's just one of the ways that you can use Matsuri on attack. And generally speaking, you're going to be using Matsuri on attack. In this comp, the idea is like, let me oh, let me just go to a, a little bit better one over here. So in this comp, the idea is that you get the Matsuri to take as much damage as possible so that she can get the TP up. And then so the Yuki can juice up the Matsuri to get her TP up even faster. And then you've got the healers back here 
who are sustaining the Matsuri who is being an absolute nuisance in the midline or the backline of the enemy team. Mitsuki laying down that AoE physical damage field like it's just a lot of cleave so I guess if you can really call it cleave this is kind of the idea behind this comp at least. There are definitely a few other comps that you can use with Matsuri like featuring Lima or like Shizuru. A lot of single target healing and like TP boosting just to make sure that your Matsuri can get into like the mid and backline and stay there. But yeah that's kind of it and so like as you can see she is doing like that work exactly what we're talking about right just spinning around doing that pb aoe the aoe around her and so actually what happens now is she gonna jump back again yeah she did look at her <laughs> oh my gosh bam that's pretty impressive that's pretty impressive to be honest and the fact that it lines up with the mitski field the defense downfield like that is making her super super lethal but let's see Oh my god, okay, okay, that is something that I do need to talk about as well. Because what you're seeing here is Matsuri redirecting the Saren's UB in the opposite direction, the direction that your team is not in. And the reason that this is possible is because the Matsuri has actually ended up behind the Saren. And so Saren is facing backwards to attack the Matsuri, and so when she UBs, she's going to UB backwards, which is absolutely hilarious. This kind of interaction already actually exists in our global version. I just can't remember like which unit, so maybe like Mimi? If I remember correctly, like if you're attacking a comp that has a Tsumugi in it and you put your Mimi in position too. I think what happens is like the Mimi gets pulled to like the other side of the map. Anyway, there's so many crazy shenanigans in this freaking princess game. So yeah, that kind of summarizes like one of the comps with the Matsuri. Like obviously it's PvP. Like PvP we already know we want to go into like the PCR defense just to make sure that we are doing things right. However, again, like Matsuri generally speaking, she is not going to be on defense. Oh my god, okay. This is going to be a good one. This is a really good one because this is the exact scenario that I talked about like with two tanks and three DPSs on the back and the reason that this one is so freaking interesting is because we've got the Kuka over here so as you guys can imagine Kuka and Nozomi and other tanks or anybody that has a taunt that taunt is going to help you counter against that Matsuri like so when the Kuka taunts she is going to be able to catch that Matsuri it's very similar to like the Kukas catching the Tamakis like generally speaking the Tamaki is going to go for the unit with the highest magical attack however if Kuka's taunt is active the Tamaki will attack the Kuka and the same goes for Matsuri. And so therefore when Matsuri UBs, if the enemy Kuka has her torn up, the Matsuri is going to jump onto the Kuka instead of like the third in place, which would be the Suzuna. And that would be absolutely lethal, right? She would jump in and then like whack all of these DPSs and then away she goes. And so I guess there's like your first anti-Matsuri kind of thing. Like if you are scared of like this Matsuri meta, then probably run Kuka. But generally speaking on defense, you're probably going to be running Kuka anyway. Like she just has such a good like a breadth, I guess, breadth of coverage. Not only does she have the taunt against Tamakis, but she also has like self-healing and she also has physical defense up and she is able to withstand magic units incredible Kuka is just like one of the best tanks in the game right now and actually I think into the future as well anyway that's kind of it for this one let's just watch the Matsuri jump in so about here maybe she is probably gonna jump in okay here okay here we go <laughs> oh boy I freaking love it it's just so fun to watch I, I don't think I'm gonna like dealing with it but like Actually, wait, I should have shown you guys like the jump onto the cooker. We'll watch that next. So watch her jump into the back line. This is just absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. Bam. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Boom. That is, that's kind of it. And look how tank she is. Look at how tanky she is, man. She is able to eat that freaking Hatsune UB and that was only like maybe 15% HP. And so now she is just going to be doing all of this AoE damage and she, look at them, they're all stunned. She has stunned everybody. If that is not annoying, I don't know what is, my guys. Anyway, let's have a look at the Kuka interaction. Let me see if I can find it. All right, watch this, my guys. Like it is not the Kuka example, but it is where Matsuri really, really shines. There's a lot going on here. Oh my gosh, just look at that. Good night, sweet prince. And then she's just gonna finish off that Ilya, like, wow. It's just, it's just a nightmare. It's just such a freaking nightmare in there, man. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I can't actually find a single instance where the cooker is able to catch the Matsuri. However, I am sure you guys believe me, it will be there somewhere and you guys will see it at some point, probably. And so guys, with all of this kind of like showcases, like all of these different videos and like everything that's going on, hold up, there's no Matsuri in there. I just want to come back to kind of like the core ideas of Matsuri and like when you're going to use her, think about these kinds of things, right? And so again, because a lot of our skills actually revolve around like the PB AOE or the 
the point blank AoE. So that's like AoE around her. 300 distance this way and then 300 distance that way. You guys saw that massive AoE stun. Big AoE damage on skill 2. Big AoE damage on the UB. It's just like AoE damage everywhere, right? And so there are a couple of different ways to play it, right? So like generally speaking, you will either want to group them together. So you're thinking units maybe like Lima or like Tsumugi. On top of that, you also saw the other option, which was to actually use a little bit of sustain to make sure your Matsuri stays in the enemy team. And so you got to be really careful about this one. So for example, uh, we have Misato. Misato, she actually heals on the frontmost unit. And so when the Matsuri jumps into the front, if she isn't already the front, she will be the front. So coming up to her skill two, so HP regenerate to the frontmost ally. And then on top of that, you've got like your Yukaris, you've got like your Mahos who heal based on the lowest HP unit. Another really key unit for that is also like the Shizuru who does the healing to the lowest HP again. However, the reason I'm emphasizing this is because there are a couple of units which you would think would heal the Matsuri, but they won't. So for example, Jun. And if you read Jun's skills carefully, so uh, I think it's the skill one. Yeah. Small recover HP to the ally with the lowest current HP in range around her. So Jun's skill range is within 300 range. So like that's pretty generous, but like Matsuri is going to be like 1000 units away after her little UB leap. And so what I'm saying is that when you're coming up with ideas on how to use Matsuri, if you are going to be using that sustain method, like Jun or characters like Jun, they're not really it. Again, generally speaking, you're probably going to be looking at the Maho, the Misato, the Yukari, the Shizuru. You could look at Summer Kokoro, but I think that she is way too slow. Like Summer Kokoro, by the time she gets her UB, your Matsuri is probably dead twice over. But yeah, that's kind of it, like in terms of like the synergies that I've got for you right now. I think as Matsuri gets released and we actually go get to play with her, we will get like, or rather, we will see a meta develop. However, it is a lot harder to see this meta because like generally speaking, it's going to be on the attack side. Again, Matsuri probably is not going to be on the defense side. There's just like way too many ways to counter Matsuri, right? Like we've got Kuka for one, but also Matsuri generally speaking is going to be towards the front. And a lot of the time she is going to be running with Lima. And so what that means is that it's going to be Lima and then Matsuri and Matsuri on position two. I don't know guys, that kind of screams something to me. And hopefully that screeching sound was blind on position two. So I'm talking the Yuki and I'm talking the Maho. So yeah, Matsuri, like generally speaking, she's probably not going to be on defense. Like, however, she is going to be really fun to play with on attack. And so, yeah, looking forward to her. However, like with that being said, I think there's nothing left to be said except... Let's wrap up this video. All right, guys, I have a secret message and that is Tigger. Because what's interesting about the CN server is that they give nicknames to a lot of different characters, right? And Matsuri got the nickname of Tigger. And so it's actually the combination of these three words over here. So you can see Tigger. And so if you do want to look her up, you can look for Tiao Tiao Hu. So T-I-A-O, T-I-A-O, and H-U. All this means is like Jumpy Tiger, which it translates kind of to Tigger. And so if you guys could drop that secret message Tigger down into the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. Much. But otherwise, please consider a like, a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what it is. To support the channel, we've got a membership thing down below. But otherwise, as Matsuri once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.